If you want to be reliable with your word when you have a chronic illness, it's really important that you stick to doing the things that you say you're going to do. Here's the problem with that statement. Usually when we are told that statement, it means make a promise, say you're going to do something, and then no matter what, follow through. And it's a little bit different here in what I'm trying to convey. Um, here, it's, it's a process of learning more about yourself and what you're capable of. It's really a process of self-discovery and in, in learning how to be able to say, here's what I can do and here's what I can't do. And so I will not tell you that I can do something that is going to either be beyond my capacity and cause a crash later or is going to make me resent you because I'm doing it solely for you and it's actually taking away from me in some way or capacity. Um, so there's this process of learning what is right for you and what is wrong for you. And then again, even within that, there's nuance because what's right for us isn't always this, in fact, a lot of times it's not this purely selfish thing of like, oh, this is the thing that's right for me. And therefore I will only do this thing. Like for example, a lot of us, it's hard to like go out late at night or go to maybe like more than one function in a day. So what that might look like then is you don't plan to go to more than one function in a day the majority of your months and years. You really try to not overcommit to things and you just focus on putting things on the calendar that you know are not going to make you overly fatigued, overly in pain, overly resentful. If you do that 80 to 90% of the time, when things pop up and it just feels like, you know, you have no choice but to do two things in one day. And also, this is important, if you make that choice to do more than one thing in a day, there should be a reciprocal relational aspect to it. So maybe you are doing this thing that you don't want to do and it's for your loved one, your partner, your friend, your parents, you know, whoever. They really want you there and it feels really important for you to be there and it's important for them that you're there there's a difference in making this decision has to come with some kind of mutual respect. So the person is not just asking you to go above and beyond your means because they don't care about you and they don't believe that you have limitations. Um, they're asking you to be there because it's just genuinely important to them. And because they're important to you, you decide, okay, reciprocally like this is going to be a little bit more than I can handle but this is a reciprocal interaction within this relationship with this person that I care about and because of that I will allow myself to kind of go a little bit be beyond my capacity today and I make sure that I have supports in place you know meaning I'm able to not do anything the next day or maybe maybe this is just like a busy week and you can't really plan it to be so you know okay, I'm going to overdo it today, but not tomorrow. Maybe you don't have a choice but to overdo it all weekend. You make sure that at some point when this wave of overdoing it passes, you don't just kind of collapse and crumble. You really have supports in place that allow for true, genuine rest. When you take the time to rest and allow for it, like like it's blocked off time in your calendar um, and you have deprioritized other things and prioritized rest. That's how you start to manage some of the resentment that comes along with not only like people asking you to maybe do more than what you're capable of, but resentment towards yourself too for not being able to quote, do as much as other people. Um, which if you ask me, I think really since COVID, all of us have realized that our capacity is really a lot lower than what we thought it was. Personally, I think everyone has a much lower capacity than they, they claim to. Um, you know, we just overdo it in this country. 
So yes, with that said, you know, when you have a chronic illness, you do have an even lower capacity than the average person. But I just think it's important to note that I really think all of us overdo it in some way or another. Um, you know, when we, when we start to look for the similarities between us and other people, we can start to feel connected to them, even when it feels like our situation is so much worse or so much different than someone else's. So to bring this back round circle to being reliable with your word, there's a f quite a few things that go into this. And, and one thing that I didn't mention already was um, reducing shame and guilt. And the way that we start to reduce shame and guilt is really just even acknowledging that it's there in the first place really calling it what it is like I feel shame or I feel guilty for not being able to do what I said I was going to do and again you can then try to you know push through that and be like okay you know from now on I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I say I'm gonna do and I'm gonna push through it no matter what and then you end up kind of hating yourself later um, so instead the encouragement here is to do what you say you're going to do, but to not say you're going to do something that you know is going to wreck you later. And then there's a lot of things that go into making that decision, such as what's meaningful to you, what's valuable to you, what you need in order to survive. Like a lot of times our jobs are the things that, you know, we don't have a choice over because you have to make money to live. So, and, and, you know, that brings us into a, a whole other topic for another time, but work really is supposed to, I think, bring us meaning and purpose, but for a lot of us, it doesn't. So again, it's about finding a balance in your mind where you can maybe find some meaning and purpose in the job that you're already doing, but then continuously kind of working through you know, working in a self-development kind of capacity of figuring out what is important to you, what kind of job you would like to do that would bring you more meaning and purpose. Um, and again, that's, that's a whole other episode because that just, there's a lot that goes into that. I think it's important to note how much goes into making these decisions because on social media, you will find a million videos around, you know, just do this thing and you'll figure out X, Y, and Z. Um, I just don't think it's that easy. I don't think it's that easy. So um, maybe, yeah, there are maybe times where um, certain videos and social media concepts that are kind of little sound bites will help you kind of nudge you and put you on the right path. Or maybe you read something one time and all of a sudden everything just clicks. Um, and if that's the case, that's fine. That's great. That's wonderful. Just know that it, it did take you multiple different like learning lessons before you got to that place. So anyone who promises you to kind of like go through a six step process and after that six step process, your whole life will be figured out is I promise you that is just marketing. They might actually have a process but it's going to be a lot more in depth than what their marketing says it is. Um, you know, marketing at its core is psychology. So I feel, I feel pretty qualified to speak on this. Um, marketing and sales is psychology. And some people use that for good. And some people use that for really manipulative, tricky kind of evil ways. Um, but, for the most part, people tend to buy things when they're in pain. They want to do something to make their pain go away. So I just think it's really important that for those of us that live in constant pain, you're really evaluating how you make your choices when you are buying things. And wow, I just went on a tangent. Um, this, you know, again, this episode started off as like being reliable with your word. Uh, and then it went into kind of job and career stuff. but. As you can see, this is a really complicated, personal development is really complicated. It's complex and that's okay. Like it's supposed to be. And I think part of the problem, a big part of the problem is that we think it's not supposed to be because social media and marketing has told us it's not supposed to be. And if you just follow this six step process, you will never be unreliable with your word again. You will never hate your job again. You will 
you know, l lose all the weight that you want to lose and you will keep it off forever. Like there's, there's just a six step process for every problem in this world. You know, on that note, like sometimes you do have to really break it down and just focus on this like one thing at a time and kind of learn this little lesson before you can move on to the next thing. My qualm is not with six step processes. My problem is with processes that claim that your whole life will be changed in six steps. Little bits and pieces of your life will be changed at a time and you will, you will grow and learn and bend and mold over time. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Like, even as I, I talk about these concepts on the podcast, it is always, always with the intention that nothing is a quick fix and just like, you're just going to get through it without any pain. A big part of this process is learning to embrace some of that pain and allow it to be there and accept it for what it is, which is a part of the process. So learning to be reliable with your word is about figuring out what's important to you. And sometimes what's important to you is not that simple. So it's about, you know, figuring that out for yourself with the help of a therapist, a mentor, a coach, somebody that you really trust. Um, not somebody who just has really good marketing. So, so if you're watching this on YouTube and you have questions about that, leave a comment with a question. If you're on Instagram, DM me. And if you're on the podcast, I hope you'll leave a review if you found this episode helpful. That's it for today. Thanks.